Okay, Avaz. Here's another one for you from Peter in London. Could Ben give us more details on the result of his petition? Sure. Well, uh, Peter in London today, actually, uh, Hillary Ben, your environment minister, received the Avaz petition combined with uh, petitions from a number of different NGOs. We had a combined signature count of 2.6 million people around the world who signed climate change focused petitions in the last year. Uh, and he uh, was quite vocal about wanting to take this inside to the meeting of the ministers and, and uh, you know, use it as a sort of negotiating tool to, to say that, hey, all your people are paying attention to what's going on here. Um, there's different, you know, there's a, there's a few different ways that petitions can have an impact. One is that it, it demonstrates uh, the number of people in particular countries that are fa paying attention and kind of uh, makes it visceral what the political consequences could be of, of doing the wrong thing. Another thing is that we use the petition uh, to buy a full-page ad in the Jakarta Post today. This is the newspaper that's given out for free here at the conference, and uh, everybody reads it, and this full-page ad had a picture of the leaders of Japan, United States, and Canada done up in a style uh, of the Titanic movie poster with a huge ship prow coming towards the, uh, towards the reader, and it said, no icebergs, just disaster coming soon if there's no breakthrough at Bali. And then we had the number of people who had signed the petition. And that was, you know, covered extensively by media here. And uh, we saw delegates waving it around. And, you know, it was something that did pick up quite a lot of attention. And while the, while the art might have done it by itself, I think the power of a statement like that comes from the fact that it's been endorsed by thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. So, you know, that just the act of signing is only half the equation. You then have to deliver the petition. And uh, that's sort of Avaz's specialty is, is one, uh, launching petitions, and then two, finding ways to deliver them so that they can land with a punch. Mm, punch. Punch is what we got. Oh, here's Jeff with another question, and then we'll probably have to let you go then because we're running out of time a bit. One Climate is going to give a positive Climate Justice Award in 2008. I don't know why I'm telling you that. I think I should be telling our, our viewers and listeners. We've, we've mentioned it on several nights, and uh, it's, very, it's a big part of our uh, ambitions for, for next year, too. Oh, would Avaz like to join up with us? I'd love to talk to you guys more about it, yeah. I mean, we, uh, I think there's, there's room for sticks and carrots in the, in the whole picture, definitely. Okay, that's great. Um, can I ask you before you go, just on, back on the conference here, because we are in the conference hall. It's, uh, everyone's waiting to see what's going to happen. I don't know if you're following that closely. But are you, what's your feeling? Are you optimistic, pessimistic? about the outcome? Do you think it takes us forward or that it's just very slow process and that's what we're stuck with? Well, there's this... Uh, I think Gore really summed up the situation in his speech last night. He basically said you have to pass the puck to, the, to where the players are going to be, not where they are right now. And everyone knows that the Bush administration is on its way out and that it's negotiating on behalf of kind of the old United States and that now public opinion in the U.S. has totally changed. So there's no question that the United States, now linked with Canada, are, are, are doing the most to block a breakthrough here. But I think there's a tremendous, um, I think there is a tremendous step forward, which is that it's clear that a very different type of, of global political situation is coming. And I think, you know, one part of the, of the change is the fact that this has been such a high-profile conference. People around the world have paid such close attention to it. Um, you know, Harper's government in Canada has, has been working to convince its citizens that Canada is actually very good on climate change. Uh, but at an event like this, you kind of can't uh, sustain that illusion. And I think that, you know, maybe the biggest output of this conference will actually be that the um, domestic political effects in the countries that, that aren't or that are doing the right thing, so that at next year's conference or certainly at the year after that, uh, we'll be able to have the kinds of agreements that, that everyone knows we need and we're all hoping for tonight. Okay, that's great. Thank you very, very much. Well, talking, yes, high octane is uh, <laughs> what we've had tonight. So, um, well, thank you. Uh, great campaign. And uh, I must say, the, uh, the fossil of the day was one, about the most entertaining thing, uh, part of every day. And I think it had a big impact, actually. People are talking about it. It was in the media. It certainly got through to delegates. They didn't necessarily change position, but it's been fantastic. So thanks very much for coming in when your throat's giving out. But you're going to be staying here till the end but right through the night if they work till very late, or are you going to call it a, call it a day now? I haven't decided. I think my, my stomach will probably decide for me, but I've heard a rumor that they're going to start again in the morning, and if that's true, then I'll definitely leave, drink, have some dinner, and then uh, sleep in and see if they've finished up. Okay, it's like that in Bali. It's not just a holiday. There are people working very hard here. So thanks very, very much. Um, and 
at this point, I normally riffle through my papers and do the news, but it would be much too much of an anticlimax, I think, because we've had fantastic panel. And look at all these questions we haven't even got around to, which in a way proves, I think, you know, that this, because for us this was an experiment in Second Life, to see, you know, how good it was for, for democracy to get people involved in the process without them having to come here. And, uh, well, I'm going to get Jeff in. I, can you leave behind the cameras? <laughs> because, uh, oh, sorry, you're going to say something else. We'll get a few more words out of you. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, these, uh, these conferences, they do... The UN and FCCC has actually been wonderful about inviting NGOs into the process. But uh, governments, especially governments like, like the Bush administration, love to operate in secrecy, away from public eyes. And uh, here in Bali, that just hasn't worked at all. And uh, unlike Las Vegas, what happens in Bali doesn't stay at Bali. This is a, a global event. The eyes of the world are, are on us here, and the consequences that uh, come out of this will, will occur when the politicians and delegates go back home, not just, not just uh, in the eyes of, of the uh, people who are pleased or displeased right here in Bali. Okay, one more thing, just in this context, because often people say, oh, it's U.S. bashing, there you go again, you know, it's always the U.S., the U.S. Is it a case of U.S. bashing, are they an easy target, or is it, is it that they, are, they need to be singled out in this conference and in this, uh, on these policies? Well, here's the, fun, here's the funny thing about the U.S. at this point. The American people are actually very progressive on climate change. There's a tremendous public demand for, for action on this issue. The Bush administration is isolated not just from the rest of the world, but from its own country. So it's really Bush administration bashing at this point. And, and uh, it's gratuitous in one sense, which is that the Bush administration seems to genuinely not care what the rest of the world thinks or its own people think. Uh, but, you know, all the, all the attention that, that happens right now really does affect what environment the next administration is going to enter. So if, um, you know, whoever's elected president knows that the United States' global reputation, its ability to forge alliances, and also their domestic political success rides on how they confront climate change, uh, I think we'll see a very different type of presidency next. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks. Uh, I'm a bit worried that the tape, that we're going to run out of time, but let, let's go. It's got five minutes. Jeff, you've got to talk as fast.